In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this responsive web design using CSS Grid. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm opening up the sketch file with the layout of my design. On the left, I have the layout for the desktop design, and on the right, I have the mobile layout. At the top of the page, I have the nav bar, and then to the left, I have the sidebar. And then I have a main section of content at the top, followed by three separate content areas, and then the footer at the bottom. For the mobile layout, I have everything in one column, and it has the nav bar at the top, then the sidebar, then a main section, and then the content areas, followed by the footer. I'm going to create this exact layout using CSS grids. CSS grids are pretty powerful and allows you to make really cool layouts very quickly. So I first recommend going into Sketch or Figma or some design tool and creating a layout of your page. And then once you create your layout, you can add grid lines. So I've already done that here. And the grid lines just emphasize the different areas of content on the page. So to make it a little bit more clear, I have the columns emphasized here. So if we kind of think about it that the grid lines separates all the pieces of content, then we can look at each individual element. So there are four columns for this project in desktop view, and they're each the same size, right? So the sidebar is the same size as each of the content areas. So because all of them are the same size, I'm going to use one FR for each column. FR is the fractional unit that you can use for grid. So basically we will indicate that there are four columns each of the same size. So we will use one FR to describe each column. Now in terms of rows, the rows are a little different. So there are four rows here, but they are of different sizes. So that first row, I don't want it to be so big. So I'm going to make it a smaller FR. And then the main area, I actually want this area to be bigger. So this will be a bigger row area, followed by a smaller row area, and then another smaller one beneath that for the footer. So the way that I recommend approaching CSS grids is first working with a designer or creating a layout of the design yourself. And then once you have the layout created, you apply grid lines on top of that to indicate how many kinds of rows and columns you're going to have. And then you can really parse it out to determine how many columns you need and how many rows that you need. And then you can also determine the amount of space each element should take up. So because the columns are all the same size, I'm just going to use one FR for each one, but the rows will be different sizes. So I included different size units for each one here. So I'm going to take this design and recreate it with CSS, and then we will create the mobile design for this and make it responsive. So now I'm going to jump to CodePen so we can start creating this. For right now, I only have a head tag in here with a link to a font that we will use later. I'm going to start by creating a div and giving it a class of container. And in this div, we're going to place all of the elements that will be visible on the screen. So I'm going to start by creating a nav and I'm just going to put nav bar in the name of it. Then I will create a main content and I'm just going to put the name of what it is inside of the container so it'll be easier to identify. Then I'm going to make several divs. So that first div, I'm going to give it an ID of sidebar. The second div, I'm going to give it an ID of content one. And then I'm going to make two more divs with the same structure. And the last element will be a footer. So now we have all the main elements on the actual page and it's visible right here. So that's all the HTML for this document and the rest is going to be completed within CSS. So in the CSS, initially I'm going to call that container and I'm going to give it several properties. So the first one is going to be display grid. I'm going to give it a height of 100 of the viewport height so that way it spans the whole screen so we can really see how the content flows on this page. Next, I'm going to define the sizes of the columns and the rows. So if I go back to my sketch document, first I will define the columns. So if we just look at the columns layer, I have four columns that are all the same size. So I'm going to jump back into my code pen 
and I'm going to write grid template columns. And then define the amount and the size of each column. I want four columns that are each one FR, so I'm going to write one FR four times. Instantly, we see that the page changed because now I have four columns. I only have seven elements, so that is why this area is blank. Next, I'm going to define the rows. So I'm going to go back to my sketch document and look at my row reference. So I have four rows, but they're different sizes. So the first one's 0.2, the second one's 1.5, and so on. So I'm going to use this document to reference the grid template rows. And I'm going to put the four values in here. So right now the page has changed in that this first row on top contains these four elements and it's only 0.2 of the height of it. And then the other pieces of content flow into that second row. So to make each item a little clearer to see, I'm going to add a background color behind each element. So first for that nav, I'm going to add a background color and so on. So I think it becomes a bit clearer when I added the colors to the background, exactly what's happening here. So right now it does have the rows and columns that we defined on the page, but right now each element is only taking up one spot in the actual grid. So that's why that top row is skinny and it contains four elements. The second row is a bit taller and it only contains the remaining three elements. So now to really define the areas that we have in this design file, I'm going to want to specify exactly where each element should live in the grid. And I'm going to do that by using grid template area. So if we jump back to our reference, we can see that that nav bar occupies that first row completely. So it's like the nav bar is here, the nav bar here, here, and here. For the second row, the sidebar occupies the first slot and then main occupies the next three. And then for the third row, the sidebar continues, and then content one, two, and three. And for the last row, the sidebar is here, and then the footer is in the last three spots. So basically, we are going to represent this with text. So I'm going to write grid template areas, and then in quotes, I'm going to place what element we want to be visible on each block of the grid. So again, for that first row, I want it to only be the nav bar. So I'm literally going to write nav four times. In that second row, which again, I'll just bring up the design file really quick. I want sidebar to be first, and then I want the main to be three times. So in the actual CSS, I'm going to write sidebar and then main three times. In that third row, I'm going to want it to be sidebar and then content one, two, three. So I'm literally going to write that in my CSS. And the very last one is sidebar and then footer three times. Now this part is really cool because I just wrote it out with plain text. And now we just have to assign what we want to be visible where. As you can see, nothing changed in the UI of the website, and that's because we didn't assign these values anywhere. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to label each element what I have labeled up here in the grid template areas. So the way to do that is for nav, I wanted to reference this nav element right here that I defined in the grid template area. So under this nav, I'm going to write grid area and then write nav. Then I'm going to do the same for main. So I'm going to write grid area and then write main. Then I'm going to write grid area, sidebar, and so on. 
I realized I added an extra space under content three. And now the elements actually appear on the screen and it actually looks pretty close to the design. So by using grid template areas and defining where we want our content, we can easily create really cool layouts. Next, I'm going to want there to be a little bit of space between each element. So I'm going to add a grid column gap and a grid row gap. So I'm just going to write grid gap and I'm going to do 0.2 REM so we can just see what that looks like. And that just adds a little bit of spacing between each column and row. Next, I'm going to make this responsive. So right now I have the grid set up. So it doesn't matter how big or small the screen is, everything stays in its same place and the width of it changes. So I'm going to make some modifications. So when this reaches a certain point, the structure of the page changes just like we had designed. So beneath all of this work, I'm just going to write at media only screen and I'm going to write max width of, I'll just write 550 pixels and we can see how that feels. I'm going to add some characteristics of how I want this to look when it's at 550 pixels in width. So to go back to our design reference, again, here was our desktop layout and here is our mobile layout. So I want everything in one column but in making everything in one column, the number of rows that we have increases. I'm going to jump back into CodePen and I'm going to add the certain characteristics of how we want this to look in the mobile view. So I'm going to write dot container. I'm going to call that container again, but add different characteristics here. So here I'm going to write grid template columns and then write one FR because I only want it to be one column wide in this view. Then I'm going to specify the rows. So I'm going to write grid template rows and then specify how I want the rows to look in this situation. Now, like I said before, in the desktop one, we had four rows, but here, because each element will be its own row, we're going to need seven rows. They're going to have various sizes. And some of this just has to do with tweaking. So you're going to have to just play around and see what fits well for your project. Okay, great. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did before with the template areas, but we're going to redefine it based on this mobile view. So we want the nav bar to be first, then the sidebar, then the main, followed by the content areas, and then the footer will be last. So I'm going to follow that same structure for my grid template areas. And as you can see, now this view directly reflects our grid template areas that we have defined. So now as this expands, it goes to the other grid template area. So now the mobile view is exactly how we designed it with the grid template areas exactly following what we have defined. And then when it exceeds a certain width, it changes to that original template area that we defined earlier really cool and really easy to make different templates. So the last thing I'm going to do is add some styling to this so it looks like what we have designed. So at the top, I'm going to define certain variables that I know I'm going to want to repeat throughout the system. So I'm just going to define a radius and a padding that we may want to change later, but I want it to be consistent across the whole design. So I'm just going to define these as variables at the top. Then I'm going to use that for each element. So I'm going to write border radius and then apply that variable. And then I'm also going to add a padding to the top with that variable that we defined. And then apply each one to every element. Next, I'm going to apply some styling for the text. So I'm going to go back to my container. Then I'm going to add that font family that I put in the header of the HTML file. I have a video that goes over how to import Google Fonts into your web design, so I'll link that video below. So I'm going to add the font family. I'm going to increase the weight of it. 
I'm going to apply a text transformation of keeping it all uppercase. Then I will modify the size of it and the color. And then finally align it in the center. So there you go. That's how I make responsive CSS grids. So just to review what we did, first I defined a layout in Sketch. I defined the desktop layout and the mobile layout. And then for the desktop layout, I drew the grid lines to kind of get a sense of how many columns and rows that the design will need. Then I defined each column and realized they were all going to be the same size. And then defined the rows, which were going to be different sizes. And for the mobile design, I knew I wanted everything to collapse to one column, but have more rows. So in my HTML, I originally defined one container that had all of the visual elements in the design. And then in the CSS, I defined a grid, and then we set the columns and rows to their particular sizes, and then defined a grid template area, which directly mapped to the sketch design. Then I added a grid gap, so then there was a little breathing room between each element. Then I labeled each element as a grid area, so then it knew where to show up in the actual design. And then for the mobile view, we had an at media with a max width and then modified the number of columns and rows and the grid template area. So then it could actually map to the visual design. So that's how I make responsive layouts using CSS grid. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.